as Mr. Bergman has already mentioned, this year, 2010-15, is a very important year for sustainability because back in September, world leaders adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in New York. And a global deal on climate change is hopefully expected in Paris next month as well. We are all committed to a common agenda. Now we are no longer discussing this agenda. We are all totally committed. But we now need to turn that agenda into reality. We have to pass. We've passed from discussion to commitment. Now we have to go from commitment to implementation. And that means we need to change. The Commission is doing this with a revamp of a number of policies and most importantly with the new strategy to help Europe move to a more circular economy. Later, I will go into some detail of the progress that we have made. As you know, this is the priority that we at the Commission are working on at, at the moment. You know the backdrop to this, you know the urgency. It is becoming clear that the linear model of economic growth on which we relied in the past is no longer sustainable. We cannot continue to extract and consume and discard resources forever because our natural resources, including water, are finite. Now, when one thinks of the circular economy, one thinks of waste and how it can be given a new value. One also thinks of innovative new products and new material use. But one of the most fundamental parts of the circular economy, as I just mentioned, is not referred to enough, and that is water. So that is what I want to focus on today. What is the place of water in the circular economy? We are all aware of the social, climatic, and environmental pressures on water. And we understand the double bind of increased water pollution on one hand and the increasing demand on the other. So there are enormous challenges, but there are also huge economic opportunities, none more so than here in Amsterdam. We often refer to a good number of environmental challenges, yes, but let us not forget that all those environmental challenges are providing us with economic opportunities as well. Be it the efficient collection of rainwater or the recycling of waste into energy or fertilizer, Amsterdam is constantly innovating and constantly striving for a more circular system. Your fully integrated approach to the circular economy, linking food to water, to waste, and to energy is globally recognized. The reuse and the recycling of water in industrial processes are an essential part of the circular economy. While it reduces costs of water input, it alleviates pressure on water resources. It can also prevent harmful emissions through industrial wastewater. Reusing wastewater after treatment offers new opportunities, and at present, there is still insufficient take-up of those opportunities. And there are easy wins, for example, in irrigation. But the greatest potential is in the reuse of municipal wastewater. The figures give a sense of the scale involved. Currently, about 1 billion cubic meters of treated urban wastewater is reused annually. This volume represents less than 0.5% of the annual EU freshwater withdrawals. But the potential is much higher, much higher. We estimate that the European Union potential, mainly in Southern Europe, is in the order of 6 billion cubic meters. That's six times the current rate. But recycling does not just address the question of scarcity. Countries that do not yet face severe problems with supply can also benefit. 
Technology for water reuse already exists and European companies are among the global leaders in this field. Yet, there are still large differences in uptake. Cyprus, for example, reuses almost all of its treated wastewater, but other countries with similar natural conditions, such as Greece, Italy, and Spain, only reuse between 5 and 12 percent. Like in other sectors where circular economy has great potential, we need to address the barriers to water reuse. I refer to some regulatory, institutional, and even financial barriers. These barriers need to be tackled so that reuse becomes an obvious solution for water managers, for farmers, and for utilities across Europe. One way how we can tackle the barriers is through the European Innovation Partnership on Water. We are now supporting some 30 action groups, all of them working on water innovation, helping and we are helping them bring their valuable innovations to the market. At the same time, we are supporting the industry, we are also learning from it. We can then use this knowledge in policy making that helps improve conditions for all water innovators. In the coming days, I will be presenting the new strategic framework to the steering group of the EIP to make the partnership even more efficient and even more goals oriented. We will present this work in the EIP Water Conference in February next year in Louvarden. And I am taking this opportunity to cordially invite you to the conference. Municipalities do play a fundamental role in the development of water innovation. And the success of the initiative of this conference will most certainly depend a lot on your presence. Water managers have to take some big decisions. We live in a densely populated continent. By 2020, 80% of the population will be living in urban areas. And that is going to put even more pressure on water management, especially when coupled with seasonal peaks in tourism. You know all too well how vulnerable cities can be to the effects of extreme weather events. And that is why better water management is also needed to make urban areas more resilient to floods and droughts. That will, of course, come with a significant price tag, but it is a good investment which can save billions of euro in avoided losses and damages. So we need to rethink and we need to re-engineer our economy in a different way. We need a greener economy that reconciles our economic objectives with our environmental and social goals. And this is precisely the thinking behind the EU's growth strategy. It is driving the EU towards a smart and a more sustainable economy. It is mindful of the fact that we in Europe import six times the resources that we export. The changes we have in mind revolve around the idea of using our limited natural resources, including water, in a wiser and in a more efficient and in a more rational manner. The business case for circular economy is very, very strong. Studies confirm and show that there are significant saving opportunities for the European Union industry. Next month, the Commission will present its plans for the circular economy. And without going into details, I can say that the new strategy will include a legislative proposal on waste recycling targets and an action plan covering the whole life cycle of products and materials from design and production to consumption and reuse and on to recycling. Increasing recycling is important also for economic competitiveness. The two main reasons being, 
First, that today, the European Union, as I said, imports six times more resources than it exports. And secondly, that the prices of the same raw materials are constantly rising. We also want to further stimulate a more efficient use of material and a more circular product design. Smarter design will allow more replaceability or repairability of broken components and a higher reuse of materials. In other words, better design is the key to keeping valuable resources in the chain for as long as possible. Some companies will find new markets by developing new business models based on leasing, based on sharing, repairing, upgrading, or recycling. Here in the Netherlands, you, you already have a number of leading examples, be it the leasing of, for example, washing machines or carpets or even lighting solutions. The message is clear. The customer pays for the use and not for the ownership of the product. I refer, and I am referring especially to the sector of domestic products, but this model could equally and easily be applied to industrial plant and machinery. It seems clear that many business opportunities for SMEs will also emerge from this new approach. Informed consumers make better choices, and in this respect, eco-labels are important tools. We are currently testing new methods to evaluate environmental performance, and this is better known as the environmental footprint. We need a credible way to verify performance claims linked to innovative technologies, such as new water treatment or water quality monitoring techniques. Business is a very essential player. Business is a very important and a major stakeholder in the transition to a circular economy. In the past, many companies dealt with products very often of short lifetimes. But now, many companies are switching to new business strategies, offering more competitive products with a longer lifetime. In preparing the circular economy package, we have spoken to many stakeholders. We have spoken to businesses, NGOs, national authorities, academia, and practitioners, experts who have either studied the theory of circular economy or who have pioneered circular economy solutions. Personally, I have met policymakers from member states who are already implementing circular economy principles in their national policies. I was very encouraged by the outcome of a major conference on circular economy, which we called Closing the Loop, that took place in Brussels at the end of June. Perhaps some of you were even there present among the other 700 participants. This conference demonstrated that there is a growing consensus and a growing support for the circular economy. This was further underlined by our public stakeholder consultation, which found a very broad support. Citizens, businesses, NGOs, local and national authorities, again, all stakeholders, want the development of a less linear and a more circular economic model. With this level of interest, we are conscious that many eyes are upon us, so we are working hard to meet that December deadline and to deliver a package that meets the expectations of all. And that takes us back to the advantages of a more circular economy, even with regards to water. It is not just a new way of producing and consuming. It's much more than that. It's really about a large-scale move towards greater efficiency. If we want a sustainable economy, we want a profound transformation of the European economic model. That's the only sure path to future prosperity. 
Water will certainly have a central role to play, and I look forward to your help in that sector, in that area. The organizers of the Amsterdam International Water Week have put together a very exciting program. I am sure it will result in inspiring debates and some theory, perhaps, exchanges of ideas. Enjoy it, share those experiences, and make sure you find ways of applying them. I thank you all for your attention, and I would like to wish you a very successful Water Week. Thank you very much.